is an isometric roguelike game developed by the indie studio Supergiant Games, previously known for Bastion and Transistor. Supergiant has had a reputation for producing well-liked games with great stories, fun gameplay, and for being artistically dignified with their inspiring art directions, acting, and soundtracks. So their latest game, Hades, was first released in early access back in 2018, opening up the development process to players who could provide feedback freely through forums and Discord. In 2020, the full version of Hades was finally released to universal acclaim, beating out AAA Cyberpunk 2077 in both average critical and user reviews. It also won two game awards, one for best independent game and one for best action game. The player controls Zagreus, who, like all the cast of Hades, is an actual figure from Greek mythology. Here, he's the son of the titular Hades and is trying to break out of the Greek underworld to find his mother, Persephone. Along the way, Zagreus can complete character quest lines and romances. Nectar is one of the in-game items Zagreus can collect. By gifting these bottles of golden liquid to other characters, he raises his affinity with them, which in turn gives him power-up items and advances their quest lines. Today, we're going to recreate the Nectar of Hades for ourselves, using ingredients that are inspired by both the game's lore and also from real-life Greek myth. Hades is a retelling and adaptation of the classical Persephone and Hades mythos. All items, settings, and characters are from classical Greek mythology. Zagreus' foster mother is the primordial goddess of night. Achilles' personal questline is about reuniting him with his lover Patroclus. Zagreus has spent his entire life sheltered underground in Tartarus, so he doesn't know what birds are or what winter is. In turn, nectar exists in Greek mythology. It's sometimes interchangeable with ambrosia. Both are the legendary foods or drinks of the gods, said to grant immortality to anyone who consumes them, amongst other positive effects. In-game, nectar is the more commonplace counterpart to ambrosia. Zagreus finds Nectar as a common dungeon drop, but he needs to defeat the champion of Elysium boss to gain a single bottle of, of Ambrosia. Who's champion now? So why are we recreating Nectar and not Ambrosia? Because there already exist tons of quote-unquote Ambrosia drink recipes. Maybe not based off of the Hades 2018 version, but there's nothing new or exciting in making yet another Ambrosia drink. Nectar, on the other hand, gives us more room for invention. In-universe, Nectar seems to be a relatively commonplace gift. Unlike with gifting Ambrosia, people's eyes don't pop out with shock. It's instead just something nice, even if not particularly rare nor luxurious. But Nectar is still prestigious enough that gifting the actual Olympic gods Nectar goes over well. If Ambrosia is the equivalent of Zagreus gifting 30 hundred thousand Bregret watches to his friends and family, the nectar is the gourmet wrapped basket of handmade marshmallows you see in the gift section of the grocery store. Something you spot while on errands and impulsively buy so you have a hostess gift the next time someone invites you over. It's a gift born of societal custom and implores the giftee to give you something in return eventually. Everyone from your multimillionaire uncle Poseidon to your humble jailbird neighbor Sisyphus are pleased to receive such a gift even if they might value its contents differently. In original Greek mythology, nectar and ambrosia aren't two distinct things. Homer describes nectar as the god's drink and ambrosia as the food, but in Sappho's poems, it's the opposite. There's more recorded mentions of ambrosia rather than nectar. Some take this to mean that both nectar and ambrosia can be seen as byproducts of the same golden fruit, one becoming the common but still valued honey, and the other the further refined mead. Both share canonical similarities. Amber and nectar are fragrant foods or drinks, sometimes used as literal perfume by the gods. We've no canonical information about nectar other than in the Odyssey, nectar is described as either rose red in color or in scent. Hades rendered nectar's appearance as an opaque gold liquid in a cute little round bottle wrapped with a ribbon to benefit its gift merchandise reputation. Nobody in Hades describes the taste or smell of nectar. Ambrosia, on the other hand, is said to be rare vintages that you're guaranteed to like. Sometimes gifting either results in a cutscene where Zagreus and company hang out in the lounge, complete with a sound clip of uncorking a bottle and pouring it into a tall glass. You can also see characters drink nectar amongst each other, 
savoring both the occasion and the taste. Eurydice offers a refreshing nectar power-up item, which just kind of looks like normal nectar but in a highball. There's a clear alcohol equivalence, but nobody references drunkenness in game. Even original classical Greek culture didn't have a drink culture like we do. Wine was revered, but it was mixed with water to be savored, not to intoxicate oneself. So ambrosia is a rare vintage. What does that make nectar? We need to make something sweet, pleasant, attractive looking, and also tangibly related to its rare sibling. So for our recipe, we're using another liquid that's distilled and sometimes fermented, apple cider. A bit of this decision comes from the sound bite of opening up a nectar in the lounge. It's a thin viscosity with a slight hint of foam or carbonation, almost sounding like beer. And the color matters too, since different distillations of apple cider can result in different colors, ranging from dark brown to a light bright gold. Apple juice when fermented can have alcohol contents going from light apple wine to brandies that have 10 to 25% alcohol. As a culinary ingredient, its fructose content means a predictable temperature tolerance and its citric acid can be used as a brine. It's also an old world food. Hades doesn't take itself super seriously with its foil wrapped gyros and french fries as in-game healing items. But any character or world building they do have, they keep it consistent. Zagreus says Hermes' symbol almost looks like a bat wing when it's very clearly a bird wing. Because he's lived underground his whole life, he doesn't know what a bird is. Weapons upgraded with the aspect of people like Guan Yu or King Arthur are through futuristic powers with hints that these mysterious people live in places with their own gods and mythology. Zagreus catches a trout, bass, or sturgeon fish for the first time, and it's completely foreign to him. But Achilles fondly remembers these Greece native fish fitting of his narrative heritage. Characters have discussions about how mortals fear death, despite Thanatos being a gentle god represented by butterflies. There's no sun, therefore no time in the underworld. Hades is the god of minerals as well as the underworld, hence gems and diamonds being an in-game loot. Apples originated in Central Asia. During the classical Greek era, they would have resembled what we call crab apples. Small, hard, sour, and cherry-sized. It implores me to find ingredients that fit the setting as with my other gamer cooking recipe or recipes. No pumpkins, no corn, potatoes, chocolate, tomatoes, vanilla. Instead, we have things like almonds, lentils, oranges, honey, garlic, and onions. All of those would have looked and tasted pretty different from our modern equivalents. Onions, for example, would look like modern wild onions with small bulbs and long green stalks, and you'd eat the whole thing rather than just the bulb part. All our ingredients will reflect not just the locale, but also the time period. Nectar is a magical food, but I still want to create a food that at least somewhat aligns with lore for the sake of the challenge. Potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. We'll be using for our recipe one and one third cups of Martinelli's sparkling cider, one tablespoon of orange flower water, one tablespoon honey, half a teaspoon of edible gold shimmer powder, a pinch of fine sea salt, two drops of lemon juice, and a drop of mint extract. Now, artificially carbonating liquids wasn't possible until the 1700s, but people were enjoying naturally carbonated waters long beforehand. Anywhere volcanic carbon dioxide gases have dissolved into springs and wells would result in bubbly water that people would scoop up, bottle, and use in cocktails and cordials. Plus, I like the idea of a magical drink having perpetual bubbles to further highlight its holy properties. To reflect nectar's sweet smelling trait, we're using orange flower water. I found mine in my local Asian grocery. It's a byproduct of making essential oil and it's colorless and flavorless, but with a strong aromatic smell that affects any food you mix it with. It's also a known ingredient in modern day Greece called anthonero, forgive my mispronunciation. And to really make it look like the food of the gods, we're adding an ingredient found more and more in swanky bars worldwide, edible glitter powder. Originally, people only used this to decorate baked goods and candies, but come Instagram, people are making these really picturesque cocktails that shimmer rainbow. 
You gotta be careful when buying these for yourself though. The tiny tins of decorative edible shimmer powder you find at Joann's may not actually be as edible as they claim. If it doesn't list as ingredients or certify itself as FDA approved, then don't use it for food. And since it's called nectar, we're also adding honey, which has a long history of its divine status as a holy food. To take down the intense sweetness of it, the tiniest pinch of sea salt, another whole pure substance. Any food with an ancient holy history was probably due to its value during ancient times and its association with the elements and therefore the deities. Sometimes the artsy scholars of society popularized a poetic description of them, such as nectar being the liquid of a many-petaled organ, or known geographic features made of salt that resembled organic forms. Honey was harvested by permanently destroying the bee nest back then, and people knew bees harvested it from the nectar of flowers, but maybe not necessarily how they further refined it. Salt was often worth more than its weight in gold, not just for its culinary purposes, but for medicinal ones. And if you didn't have the ocean at your doorstep, it was very hard to get. Since we can't control exactly what kind of apples we're using in our drink, as far as I know, Martinelli's isn't made with heritage crab apples, we're adding lemon juice to make it more sour. A tiny drop of mint extract brings a complex depth to the orange flower smell. Mix and enjoy. You can serve it with ice or drink it warm like the in-game characters are probably doing after being given a bottle that has bounced around in Zagreus' satchel all day. The mint and flower water together make the cider smell and taste more than just plain old apple, and the honey and salt go together great. I would say I taste the honey and the uh, lemon, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit of the apple, but not a lot of the apple. You taste lemon first? I taste lemon first. Okay. I don't taste the mint, but I feel like that's what was making it kind of bitter. Okay. Is the, the mint. Do you taste the gold shimmer dust? No. <laughs> no I don't think so. It's, I think it's good. Thank you for watching this first installation of Gamer Cooking Recipe Lore and stay tuned for more in the future.